Um, I just have a few things to draw your attention to this morning. The first one is a huge thanks to everyone who contributed to the cool food drive. Um, with that initial like big push, we, I think, collected almost 700 pounds of food just in that one event. And I know some of you, like me, didn't get it in on time, which is no problem because we continue to collect all year round. It's a need that is continuous. So thank you so much for your generosity, for all the ways in which you engaged with this and helped with it. And it is just wonderful to be able to support that ministry. Continue reminder, we've got the Quilter Silent Auction. Check it out. And we, the midweek blast had a couple of announcements uh, announcements about a choral piece that we will be doing to honor Jean Maloney for All Saints Sunday, as well as our Book of Remembrance. Um, that's in the midweek class and the announcement, so please just uh, take a look at that and let me know if you have any questions. We continue to just have lots of different things happening here and in the life of the church. So the midweek blasts and announcements are just your best bet to stay up to date. You don't have to have email to access that. We've always got printed copies here so that you can take them for yourself or take them and share them with a friend or family member. And then lastly, before we begin worship today, I wanted to share with you all that Chuck has been called home to God. Um, he was surrounded by his family. All of his grandchildren were able to make it. Um, he was, it was as peaceful and loving of passing as any of us can ever hope for. And so we just continue to hold his family in our prayers. They're still finalizing the details of the service. Uh, there's a possibility it'll be this weekend, but they, again, they got a lot of folks they have to coordinate. So they're, they're trying to figure some things out. So I'll let you all know when we have that information, uh, when the visitation and the service will be, so that if you are able to join us for that, you can do so. But, we, but before we do begin our worship service, I ask that we just take a moment of silence as we, we remember our dear Sir Charles and give thanks for his life. I invite you to please rise as you are able as we continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves to the power of sin. We are truly sorry. loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. We sing now our opening hymn, the number which I don't have written down, but it's in your bowls, it's an unborn. <laughs>
page 121. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The first reading is from the book of Jeremiah, the 14th chapter. Although our iniquities testify against us, act, O Lord, for your name's sake. Our apostasies indeed are many, and we have sinned against you. O hope of Israel, its savior in time of trouble, why should you be like a stranger in the land, like a traveler? turning aside the night? Why should you be like someone confused, like a mighty warrior who cannot give help? Yet you, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Do not forsake us. Thus says the Lord concerning this people. Truly, they have loved to wander, they have not restrained their feet. Therefore, the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. Have you completely rejected Judah? Does your heart loathe Zion? Why have you struck us down so that there is no healing for us? We look for peace, but find no good for a time of healing, but there is terror instead. We acknowledge our weakness, O Lord, the iniquity of our ancestors, for we have sinned against you. Do not spurn us for your name's sake. Do not dishonor your glorious throne. Remember and do not break your covenant with us. Can any idols of the nations bring rain? Or can the 
heavens give showers. Is it not you, O Lord, our God? We set our hope on you, for it is you who do all of this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing Psalm 84, verses 1 through 7, responsively. <laughs> The second reading is from the book of 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them, but the Lord, excuse me, the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me, the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thus, 
God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified, rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Beloveds of God, grace and peace to you in the name of the Holy One. Amen. As we prepared for Ellie's birthday party this week, I knew I wanted to keep her helmet off for the party. We are so close to being done and I just wanted pictures without it on. But here's the catch. From day one of her helmet wearing, we were told in no uncertain terms that she was expected to wear it for 23 hours a day. The party was like three hours. So while we are so close to being done, just another like five weeks, I have this part of my mind that is now worried that this decision will end up being a big problem. That it'll set us back, that we'll need another helmet, and that I've messed things up for our whole family just because I wanted cute pictures. So now I have to wait two more weeks to see if failing to follow the very important rule has doomed my child. All because I didn't want to follow the rule for a few hours. A bit excessive, yes, but I doubt any of you are sitting there truly thinking that, well, oh, Pastor, you probably shouldn't have done that. And if you are, that's okay too. But we have a thing about rules in our lives and in society. And many of us, I believe, have been taught some certain things about the Pharisees. And I invite you to take a moment and to think about what first comes to mind when you think of Pharisee? Anybody want to share what you think of? Self-righteous. Self yeah. Pompous. Pompous. Rule followers. Judgmental. Judgmental. Legalistic. Persnickety. Unbending. <laughs> what about... Righteous, God-fearing, faithful, loving, compassionate. I think as I, you, all, you all demonstrated exactly what I fight against every time I come up against a text with a Pharisee in it. We have been taught to view Pharisees as legalistic and rigid with no room for nuance, grace, or mercy. They were the enemies of Jesus, and therefore, we may view them as our enemies as well. And it's really unfortunate and a really, really, really harmful approach that we've been taught. We've been taught this. This is not something that just sprung out of our own imagination, but it has been taught to us. We have been taught to read the rule following of the Pharisees as though there's something wrong with them. That they don't have a real relationship with God because they're more focused on the rules, the ins and outs and minutia, than they are on trusting and going with God. And yet, following the rules was and is holy, righteous living. Following God's law was and is life-giving. Seeking to live as God had instructed was and is a good way to live. Not just for the Pharisees, 
but for every Jew and for all of those who follow Christ. Francisco J. Garcia reminds us that within the broader Jewish tradition, the Pharisees are not understood as legalistic, ritualistic, and elitist. On the contrary, because of their attention to oral tradition and interpreting the spirit of the Torah, they are seen to have played an essential role in ensuring the theological and spiritual continuity of Judaism and rabbinical Judaism in particular to this day. And yet, if we're honest with ourselves, many of us heard this today and prayed, thank you God that I am more like the tax collector than the Pharisee. Humble, self-aware, repentant, and not judgy. If we take that approach then, as Dr. Amy Jill Levine argues, our interpretation is that it is better to be a repentant tax collector than a sanctimonious Pharisee, and better to be a Christian saved by grace than a Jew who despises others and teaches salvation by works. And now the tax collector, on the other hand, right, like we have this favorable view of them because we are many thousands of years removed from the situation and we are not uh, a Jewish community. And so the tax collector absolutely would have been understood to be someone who is not to be emulated in any way, shape, or form. They were active participants in Rome's abuse and extortion. They were considered corrupt, unrepentant, undesired. No one, and I mean no one, would have wanted to be like the tax collector. Kind of throws everything upside down, doesn't it? So taking all this into account, we might wonder what was Jesus trying to say? When Jesus says that this parable is addressed to some who trusted in themselves and are contemptuous of others, I think it's accurate to say that many of us have been taught that Jesus is talking about the Pharisee, or at least people like the Pharisee. But if we think back to last week, and who his audience was in the parable last week, who was he addressing? He was addressing his disciples. And there's no, there's nothing to indicate that there's been any change of audience here, right? Like he says he's talking to some people who think this, but there's no shift to say he wasn't talking to his disciples. He was talking to the Pharisees again, or people beyond his group of followers. So if he's addressing his disciples, and we are his disciples, is he also addressing us here? Maybe what Luke is showing us here is that negatively judging others is not a trait that single, signals Pharisaic or Jewish values. Instead, it's a human trait that even Jesus' own followers were and are susceptible to. That we are susceptible to. And maybe it's not about which man we're supposed to be like, but rather that the gospel of Jesus Christ calls us to recognize that God does not divide us the way we divide ourselves. God looks for different things, and both men in this parable fulfill God's requirements from the start. The Pharisee followed the law. He went above and beyond what he was expected to do as a Jewish man. The tax collector showed us that even when we have done everything wrong, that God still makes space for our repentance. There was something that in preparing the sermon that caught my attention 
When we acknowledge, we can acknowledge how hurtful and harmful one person's actions are on a community or a family, right? When one person says or does something, often the whole community can be impacted by that, that speech or by those actions. But do we acknowledge that on the flip side, that one person's righteous acts can benefit the whole community? If we're quick, if we're willing to condemn, are we also willing to share in the rejoicing of that? So what if God welcomes all of us, even when, maybe most especially when, we do not have it all together? What if we sinners truly are justified and made whole before God? What if we release our thank you, Lord, for not making me be like those people over there? And instead, we say, thank you, Lord, for making us to be like your servant, to be like your child, to be like your family. Imagine how we could transform God's world if we lived out this belief. Imagine what God would do with us if we remembered that he makes space for every single one of us, whether we follow the rules perfectly or whether we stumble and we fail and we get back up again, God welcomes all of us. God forgives everyone. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to please open to hymn number 603 and to please rise as you are able.
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all God's creation. <clears throat> God of mercy, you are in the midst of us and we are called by your name. Inspire your church to serve and love all people with the unceasing grace you extend to us. Hear us, O oh God. God of all creation, you formed a world where even the sparrow finds a home. Preserve the beauty and diversity of all creatures with whom we share the earth. Lead us to protect all living things. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy be great. God of peace, you are an ever-present help in time of trouble. Rescue families and nations torn apart by violence and warfare. Unite all people toward common goals of reconciliation and peace for every person. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of hope, you stand with us with the suffering and give strength. Comfort your people filled with fear or anger, anxiety or shame. Bring healing to all who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of restoration, you call us to trust in you and not ourselves alone. Make this congregation a community of humility, humility and repentance. Ready to encounter you in love and follow in your ways. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the family of Chuck Charles Fitzhugh, who has gone to his eternal home. We pray that um, they find peace in the resurrection of Christ. We also pray for Denise as she recovers from a stroke. We pray for Betty and Sue battling cancer. We lift up Christopher and Lily for improved mental health. Hear us, O oh God. Your God of eternal life, to you be the glory forever. We give you thanks for James of Jerusalem and all who have fought the good fight, finished the race, kept the faith, and now live with you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with one another.
let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our God. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will, and to accomplish all things for our salvation. The night when she was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Gathered together as one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet. For all is now ready. I invite you to please be seated.
to all those who are worshiping with us from home, this is the body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you. Amen. I invite you to please rise as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift and faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we go now from this time of worship, God goes with us and before us, helping us to know that whether we got it together or we don't, he is with us every moment of every day and sends us with this blessing. <laughs> the God of steadfastness and encouragement grants you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that you may abound in hope by the Holy Spirit. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. I invite you to please remain standing as we sing our sending hymn. Christ. 